there was the assassination attempt, which we talked about before, but but just to mention that, of course, the internet's premier conspiracy theorist, Brett Weinstein, had an episode, How Many Shooters, John Cullen on the Trump assassination attempt. So he, like other conspiracy theorists, could not help themselves with like inventing, you know, kind of deep state conspiracies and whatnot about the shooter. Like, you know, maybe he was allowed to do what? No, it has to be that there was additional shooters as well as this one, right? Like, because in general, Mm -hmm. part of the reason for the additional shooter conspiracies is that the person responsible for killing or attempting to kill significant figures is often not a particularly impressive person. And so, you know, if it turns out that there's just somebody unhinged who's not really impressive but managed to get into a position to like kill someone who was a larger than the life figure people often are like no that can't be it right it can't be just this crap guy attempted to destroy this larger than life figure and succeeded or in this case failed right but so there has to be more to it right and you can do that by inventing a backstory where they're actually like a secret agent for the cia or the fbi or whatever or you can posit that there were other people involved, like on the grassy knoll or wherever, mm-hmm. right? So, but Brett did that. And in that interview, Matt, this is a guy who believes he gets coded messages from Trump delivered in his speeches to him, like proper QAnon shit. And, and Brett is straight mm-hmm. there, right? Like straight to it. So it's, he just is a giant conspiracy theorist now, which we already knew. But in response to Kamala Harris being selected, that led to the great flowering of takes online. <laughs> because, yes. like, ostensibly, this is what people on the right kind of were calling for. They were saying, you know, Biden yep. is mentally unfit. He needs to step down. Who's really controlling things? This is a, you know, look at him. He's, he's being puppeted around and all these kind of things. And then when he stepped down saying, you know, that he's made the decision that, you know, he's not going to be leading the party. Ostensibly what they called for. They called it a coup, an undemocratic coup, and this is not fair. And they they all started throwing their tantrums and throwing their... (laughs) It was like Twitter became like a pram show. Just all the toys were flying everywhere. (laughs) And it was amazing because the narrative shifted so quickly from... The Trump assassination attempt to everyone being like, oh dear, like he's now got this kind of heroic moment and a kind of invincible persona around. He picked this guy, J.D. Vance, a young conservative who people had questions about, but you know, a young guy in another round of coverage about Trump and look, he's back on the campaign trail immediately. And Biden was kind of not very visible or during a couple of interviews where he didn't come across much better and then the news came out that he got covid which was like so it there there was many celebratory victory laps being taken with like this is all sewed up now right and including that seemed to be the general consensus in liberal media that like biden is possibly not going to drop out and we're looking like we're going to be screwed from polls and whatnot and then biden did drop out (laughs) and kamala harris very quickly instead of it becoming this like kind of shit show fight thing it seemed that very quickly there was a move to kamala harris as the presumptive nominee and that Mm. seemed to greatly upset all the conservative a significant portion of like centrist heterodox accounts and they were all going crazy did you see any of this well one thing you kind of maybe passed over it a little bit but brett weinstein's theory about oh, the conspiracies are we, we going to get to that i've got the clubs we can go there if you want sure why not <laughs> no no well well we well we can i mean well the only other thing i'll say first then is that yeah it's it is it's amazing because for a long time the discourse has been that age chris age is so important mm. what we really need are, are young leaders these these people in their late 70s early 80s they're just too old to lead this country. Mm -hmm. That's really the main thing. This is why I, as a centrist, am am totally opposed to the Democrats and this walking zombie that is Biden. 
that suddenly stopped <laughs> as soon as Kamala Harris is the thing. That's gone now. Let's forget about that now. Now there are, there, there are different problems, different problems with the, with the She's Democrats. She's 59, by the way. I mean, young comparatively, but it, it's, it's amusing <laughs> it's what we kid, now no. consider, like, you know, youthful exuberance and in politics. But yeah, so David Sachs, He's one of the guys from the All In podcast, a a kind of like tech entrepreneur in Silicon Valley and has been relentlessly a kind of pro-Russia mouthpiece during the Ukraine conflict. He's just in general a massive shitty person. We, We should cover the All In podcast, but like if you have the view of like the reactionary right wing tech entrepreneur type, David Sachs is your man. And he... He went on the Twitter bender. He was just like tweeting every couple of minutes. Uh, You know, we all know Joe didn't want to go. First, they told us there was nothing wrong with Biden. Then they threatened to destroy him if he didn't leave the race. Now they're calling him a hero. How can you not be sickened by these people? What I did not know until this day, it was Nancy all along. She got him. Just this morning, (laughs) Biden's campaign chair said he wasn't leaving the race. Then Biden suddenly posts a resignation letter with no address to the country. Reeks of a coup and reeks spelled W-R-E-A-K-S. Mm-hmm. Also, Democrats are euphoric right now that they drove their own nominee and sitting president out of the race. This is desperation masquerading as strategy. As soon as the American people realize that they already know Kamala and dislike her, the bottom will drop out. Joe Biden turned America into a banana republic by prosecuting his election opponent. And as in a banana republic, he has now been deposed in a coup. What goes around comes around. So, and that's like, you know, that's Mm. probably just a span of about 20 or 30 minutes, right? Like he went on endlessly just Mm. throwing out things constantly. It's a coup. It's a coup. One candidate survived the assassination. The other staged a coup. Your choice, America. I saw Benjamin Boyce, a reactionary anti-trans kind of guy, Brett Weinstein, Uber fan as well posted a meme showing the Democrats pointing a gun at a person sitting in a couch and it says democracy, shooting them and then say, now that we got democracy out of the way, we can get back to saving it. And rigid fetacy, yep. notice centrist, the Democrats have no respect for their voters at all. It's wild. This is just some of the takes, mm-hmm. right? It was just everywhere. They were all exploding that like, this is not okay. No one can accept this. Words. And the thing is, The Democrats of various stripes, I saw progressives, you know, center left people, people on the left generally were like, well, this is fine. Overall, there was a rare general consensus that this was a positive move. And they are supposed to be the ones that would be upset about this, you know, because whenever Bernie was not selected, right, because the DNC, according to various narratives, like kind of lined up behind Clinton and and the candidates dropped out. The left was not united. That was then presented as this was a coup organized by the... But there was no talk of that in this case, or or at least very, very little that I saw on the left. So it was like the right saying, well, this isn't democracy. No no one on the left should be happy with this. And everyone on the left being, no, this is fine. This is what everybody was asking for. And like, this is democracy. She's the vice president. He stepped down. And, you know, it's just what was going to happen in this circumstance. So it's an unusual circumstance because a sitting president has, I think, never stepped down without being assassinated or something like, or like mm. having, what's his face, you know, the water yeah. gate. Well, yeah, well, he's not stepping down though, is he? He's just not running for re-election. Yeah, so stepping down in terms of not seeking re-election. Yes, he's finishing out his term. And, and Dave Rubin said that like, if Biden finished out his term, he would delete all of the social media accounts and, um, you know, exit the public punditry space. And people played that clip. So he released the thing saying, well, he's he, obviously he's not going to do that. But it's because Biden, even if he's technically physically there, he's mentally already checked out. So his prediction is uh, valid. I so, see. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just imagine the converse, right? Can you ever imagine Trump putting his party and maybe even the country first right because that's what biden has clearly done you know like any human being he's pro- he's got ambitions i'm sure he'd i'm sure he'd personally like to run a second term he's been convinced by members of his party that it's it's not in the best interests of them and perhaps not even the country that he should retire and he took that advice and he did step down you cannot imagine trump ever doing that and the other thing you can't imagine is that there was a huge amount of talk 
within the sort of general left in the United States? I know because it was just endless left-wing progressive Democratic voters talking about how concerned they were about Biden running for a second term and basically evincing their lack of confidence in him. Now, that's exactly what you're not going to see in Trump's new MAGA-style Republican Party because one of them is a cult of personality where (laughs) the leader comes first and foremost and the other one isn't. So, yeah, anyway, it's the ironies abound, the double standards. Yeah, Yeah. and there was a lot of shock expressed that like suddenly Kamala seems to be popular. But like there's various memes going around and people are like joking stuff that they were previously kind of using to dismiss her as a serious candidate that's kind of being repurposed as a positive meme, right? And they're like, why would this happen? This is completely astroturf. This could never happen. And you're like, why would people on the left rally behind the next person that's likely to be, you know, the candidate for the president in an election year with an election a couple of months around. I can think of one or two reasons that that might happen. And when the contrast is Trump, you know, or Biden, for that matter, you know, she comes across as competent and coherent and young, 59 years young. (laughs) But but, uh, (laughs) by Biden and Trump standards, that is extremely young, right? So, yeah, just, just this thing that, like, there's no reason that the left would support the left-wing candidate for the presidency. And, like, there is. There's a really obvious reason that they would do that. <laughs> but this is conspiracy thinking in a nutshell, isn't it? Where you just ignore the obvious, banal interpretation of events in, in, in favor of some lurid, insanely complicated explanation. And I think that's a theme that... We're going to be oh, following yeah. up with Brett shortly. Yes, yeah, I will. I get to that very shortly. But just Lex Friedman, he had thoughts about Kamala's selection. He said, there needs to be a transparent democratic process for selecting the nominee to replace Biden. Anointing Kamala Harris secretly behind the scenes is not a Poor Lex, he's upset that democracy is not being followed in this way, right? And Destiny responded, quote tweeting as saying, me desperately searching for Lex's requests for Trump to publish his tax returns, openly testify about his actions before Congress, like Hillary did, or his criticisms for Trump dodging Nikki Haley in every single debate request. So he's kind of pointing out. Yeah. That it's selective what Lex Friedman yeah. gets upset about, right? Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. Uh, well, Destiny sees him for exactly what he is. And we do too. Well, we do. But Lex saw what Destiny tweeted. And unlike us, <laughs> Lex has a relationship with Destiny, right? Uh, that Not <laughs> one that is based on blocks and hostility. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know way to put it. But um, so Lex responded to Destiny. Sorry you felt the need to tweet this and reduce me in a bad faith way to a trivialized caricature of a centrist you have in your mind. I criticize both sides on the podcast, including Trump. And I have many people on who criticize Trump, including you. Sorry, you felt the need to tweet this instead of calling privately. This sucks, brother. Still, I'll continue being respectful and learning from your work. God, he makes me sick. <laughs> Actually sick to my stomach. Mark, I can't stand that man. What's the, I can't stand him. What is the problem? The, it's a message of love. It, 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 uh, is it, it should be. I hope it's obvious to all everyone listening because it's not obvious to the idiots who are fans of Lex Friedman that one, it's this transparent wounded bird emotional manipulation and passive aggression. That should just be obvious. And two, he's lying. <laughs> he's lying. He just, he's, he's not even-handed at all. Anyone who listens to the content should know that and you know he thinks by playing these cards he can get away with it and he and he does it works every time makes me so angry yeah well the thing is i think people are often like you don't think lex sees himself as like a you know centrist person who is beyond no he does but i don't care how he sees himself i care what he actually does and says in his podcast and there's just so many documented selective application of criticism and Mm. and charity and and on january 6th it's been exaggerated that, you know, the press have mm-hmm. over talked it. And, you know, we've played loads of clips of him doing this constantly, that it's always this presentation of being even handed. And yes, he will do things like talk to Vincent Racanello from This Week in Virology yeah. and so on. But that doesn't undo the kind of editorial mm-hmm. skew in the majority of his content. So 
No. It's not that he never speaks to people. He does speak to people like Destiny yeah. and whatnot. But he, he doesn't answer the charges that Destiny addressed to him there. You know, he just he just sidesteps and avoids them. He never will. Yeah. But one thing I've got to say is that you're right. This is thematically appropriate and connected to the stuff we talked about at the beginning. Because the thing that drove me crazy about the so-called defenders of Western values, they're presenting themselves as that when actually they're nothing more than reactionary Puritan zealots, right, who are triggered by anything that doesn't fit their weird postmodern conception of traditional European values. So they're just not what they say they are. And that's our recurring theme. And Lex, uh, and I'm sure they think they are. Yeah. I'm sure they think they are, you know, defenders of Western values. They're not. Just like Lex is not what he yeah. thinks he is, if he even does. Tim Pool, right, noted idiot. He wrote, for example, they knew Biden was out. This whole ploy was to block Robert Kennedy Jr. from winning the Democratic nomination, which he would have. Right. But like, obviously, he wouldn't have because he was never polling anywhere near enough to secure the Democratic nomination. So mm. just it's just an alternative world, right, that they live in where this is what it's all about. Right. And Kennedy, Robert Kennedy has a famous democratic name, but he's much more popular amongst the, the right and the libertarian set than he is amongst anybody left wing. Mm. So mm. the last person I'll mention, Matt, before we get the Brett's take, and there is a reason to leave it to last, was Constantine Kissin, oh. noted centrist from trigonometry. He wrote, you couldn't write a better finale to the last eight years than a demented president resigning and handing over the candidacy to someone who was picked because she had a vagina of color. Then he followed that up with, I don't care if you're offended. Objectively, vagina of color is a sublime bit of writing. Somebody responded saying, I kind of wish you just said vagina of color is sublime. And Constantine, the consummate comedian responded, you appear to be confusing me with Francis. Uh, another person says, oh, like you're immune. And he responded, I am. Jewish in the streets, Aryan in the sheets. No, wow. there's, there's so many yeah. layers of like <laughs> badness there. You know, there's the like just Constantine being, you know, the consummate centrist where a, a demented president resigning for a vagina of color. Like that's a normal, neutral way to describe the events that occurred. And then, yeah. you know, the one image I don't want in my head ever is Constantine in the sheets. And, and what his particular proclivities are. But also that last thing, Jewish in the streets, Aryan in the sheets, that doesn't even make sense. So does that mean he only sleeps <laughs> with white people, but in yeah. the streets I, he's uh, pro? It's, 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 too, it's too distasteful to analyze and we shouldn't, yeah. as well as just being off in so many ways. It is just such a good demonstration of how unfunny <laughs> this purported comedian is. It's just so ham-fisted, ugly bullshit isn't yeah it? Yeah. it is and it's uh, you know we've talked about this superpower about cringe immunity i think this is a demonstration of it because this is the kind of thing yeah. where you should then be known as like a really polemical but also shitty comedian but but no like the thing is whenever constantine got slammed for this being a bad joke and like an off color yeah that's just liberals being triggered, right? He got them good. Yeah, but he, com yes, are yeah. comedians, usually they don't, like if a comedian was like, that sublime piece of writing, right? That would be them being, you know, self-aggrandizing and that's not good. But that's what they do now is that they, they just come out and say, you know, I'm fantastic and I'm brilliant. And since Trump, this is the playbook where yeah. their audience is like, yeah, yeah, like that's the right way to re respond. Yeah, yeah, no, it, you know, you're right. It's such a weird, curious, very contemporary phenomenon. And you're right, Trump started it by being obviously crude and shameless, and polemical and shameless. But then to just go on and say, look at me, I'm so fantastic. Look, that was all gold. That was all gold, what I did there. And everyone, it's almost like the fact that it's an obvious lie is like a testament to their power and confidence or something there's no world in which that was a sublime bit of writing a sublime piece of writing <laughs> yeah, right? no like it's a, <laughs> and and anyone else you would think that they were self-deprecatingly making fun of themselves but constantine's not right no. you could just look at all his other tweets and he's he's not he's really really not so he thought that was he really thought that was brilliant yeah so, yeah god oh that that man no. that man brett, brett. so all of that 
this is why I did in this order, Matt. So that was all the people losing their shit, running around like chickens on Twitter or social media, just everywhere. Into the fray, the Weinstein brothers step. So, you know, there's Eric. We're not going to focus too much. But of course, Eric had to, you know, tweet out pseudo profound things saying almost nothing, but like hinting at that this was an invalid choice and people should have selected Tulsi Gabbard instead if they really represent the person who, again, had hardly any support in the Democratic primary when she ran, but nonetheless, but Brett is the brother that outdid himself, and he released a short little video to Twitter or X.com, whatever way you see it, where he he wanted to warn his fellow free thinkers that there might be a trap. You know, Brett is one that likes to take the extra step and think about things at a level beyond the obvious, and he noticed something, so. Let's just hear him. And just to be clear, Matt, it's just a hypothesis, okay? It's just a hypothesis. It's not a theory, okay? Hey, folks. Dr. Brett Weinstein here. I wanted to explore the explanation for the odd events surrounding President Biden disappearing from view, leaving the presidential race via a crude letter, oddly signed, not being seen in public after his announcement that he was stepping out of the race. And then finally last night, the rampant rumors that he was either on hospice care or already dead. I see a lot of speculation about how these things relate, and most of it, I think, is off target. Now, I'm going to advance a hypothesis, and when a scientist says hypothesis, they don't necessarily mean something that they believe is likely. It's just a possible explanation. In this case, I think this hypothesis is highly likely. So if you'd like, you can describe this one as my hypothesis. My hypothesis in this case is that the many different kinds of evidence that President Biden could not be seen in public was actually a PSYOP and that that PSYOP had a likely target. The target would be folks who take the possibility of conspiracy seriously and have been exploring the various potential explanations for the assassination attempt on President Trump online and especially on X slash Twitter. So you need to know a little history to understand why I would think such a thing. I'll stop <laughs> there. You don't, you're so, not going to get that history. Yeah. <laughs> so let's reprise a little bit. So a little while back, Brett was putting forward some, some pretty strong hypotheses around Biden and possibly being dead. You know, in, in any case, even if he's not dead, he's like a like a walking zombie or not walking on life support, something like that. Yeah. Then his disappearance is, was kind of proof of this. And then all of this was kind of spoiled because Biden appeared alive and well. He hadn't at the time that Brett recorded this, though. This was before oh. he appeared. So oh. this was him oh, warning. My timeline's off. Yeah, he was warning people about the trap, which is about to be sprung. Right. So he's saying there's a lot of yeah. signs that indicate that Biden isn't around, right? I can let him outline them for you. Here's all the signs. We've seen a tremendous amount of evidence that the president was not in a condition where he could be seen in public. It was evidence that was all too easy to discover. The phone call that he supposedly had with Kamala Harris as she was taking over the reins of the campaign was clearly off. Her stumble where she seems to indicate that it's a recording and then corrects herself, fairly blatant. The signature on President Biden's letter announcing his exiting of the race, obviously not consistent with his other signatures. The lack of letterhead, his posting it on X with no picture, no witness, no follow-up press conference, none of the things you would normally expect to go along with this. All of this suggests a president that cannot be seen in public, and it was perfectly predictable that you would get wild speculation about what that meant. So the hypothesis is that all of those who are in a mindset to be exploring alternative explanations for events that we are currently witnessing in real time were lured into exploring the evidence here, which had been arrayed in a way that the dots would inevitably be connected. And then President Biden could emerge and it would embarrass all of the people who had speculated about his uh, 
coming demise, and it would cause a uh, a withdrawal of trust amongst those who had been listening to the many highly relevant critiques and explorations that have gone on surrounding the uh, near assassination of President Trump. Yes, amazing stuff. We're, we're getting a privileged peek into how the conspiratorial mind works. But the beautiful thing about this one, Chris, and correct me if I'm wrong, all of this, all of these things, right, with the the suspicious phone call, the suspicious mm-hmm. signature, all the clues, they were, they were all laid out there by the administration. That was all done to lure people like Brett into a trap of thinking that Biden was dead yeah. so that they could embarrass them. And discredit is them. That, is that correct? Yeah, and discredit, and discredit them. them. So like it's only yeah. reasonable amount when there's this amount of evidence that people will <laughs> make outlandish <laughs> alternative conspiracy hypotheses that's the only reasonable thing for people that explore alternatives to the mainstream interpretation it's so perfect it's so perfect because one of the principal features of conspiracy theories is that they just take any new information Mm. any disconfirming information and just incorporate it into the conspiracy theory so now you have brett with egg on his face because his his rampant interpretation, you know, scrying through the tea leaves was completely wrong. But you see, that's just evidence of how deep this conspiracy goes. It's planting these clues to discredit the conspiracy theorists. I wish he drew a little, you know, one of his patented flowcharts, right? Because what he might have noticed is that if Biden was sick and died, that would confirm the conspiracy. If Biden appeared yep. in public, that would confirm the yep. conspiracy. <laughs> so, <laughs> honestly, there's people, people could study <laughs> Brett's work <laughs> as, as the archetype of, oh. of, of just such a perfect illustration of how conspiracies work. So, let's just hear a last clip that kind of highlights his scientific process because you know you might have thought there, well, that's like we pointed out, can it be falsified? Well, Matt. This hypothesis comes with clear predictions. Okay, so let's see what the prediction is. That means, if it turns out to be correct, that this was a sophisticated psyop. It's not a distraction. It's not people imagining things. It is people connecting dots that were placed for them to be connected. It felt like low-hanging fruit, but in fact, it's more like get in the van and I'll give you some candy. It was a trap. Now, do I know this is true? Of course I do not. But the thing about the way science works is that you have a hypothesis and it makes predictions. And the prediction here is that the revelation of the president's relatively healthy condition and of course his condition is thoroughly decrepit but compared to a guy on hospice drugged up so that he can't even be responsive will be so profound um, that it will be used as evidence that all of those who think about the question of collusion and conspiracy uh, are prone to wild fantasies and see things where they don't exist. I would also point out that if this was a sophisticated psyop, some element of fifth generation warfare, that it is a clever operation, but that it implicates anybody who was in on it in, I guess it wouldn't be treason because presumably they're not working for a foreign government, but I guess it would be sedition. Well, you you had me at this is how the thing about science. how science yeah, works. This is science. This is, this is, this is yeah. science happening here, folks. Um okay, so take me through that logic. His his testable prediction. Uh, what what is that precisely? His testable Chris? prediction is that people will make fun of the conspiracy theorist whenever Biden emerges and he is not dead or a robot or and appears to agree with, you know, the things that he's written and and being heard to say. Like, because, you know, he's isolated yeah. while he's had That's, COVID, yeah. right? So, you know. Yeah. So if Brett and his friends look like fools, 
for <laughs> connecting all of these dots and proposing these wild, lurid conspiracy theories. If, if that, that turns out, if people make fun turns of him out, and his fans, <laughs> that, then that will prove that he was right, that this is in fact the yeah, style. It's so, oh it's, so, it's so amusing. It's like, if they indeed show that these people have made wild fantasies from this paucity <laughs> of evidence and they point this out that this is what they've indeed done will that not implicate further their claims to be correct and you're like no no of course people are going to make fun because they're saying he's already dead he's like you know he doesn't know anything that's going on and they're going to be contradicted and then I, I, this is an alex jones thing this is jordan peterson thing as well where you know at the start he said do i know this is a fact no right i'm just considering possibility then goes on to say this is science you know i'm making a prediction i this can be tested you can come back you can check this like uh, but then the last thing is now so if it was a psyop as i posit which particular crime would this be it's not treason it falls under so you know going into sedition right but like going yeah. into this hypothetical thing where you're not you're like at the stage where you're now talking about the consequences of your thing being proven correct via a very stupid mm. criteria, which will absolutely be yeah. true by people just making fun of conspiracy theories for being wrong. Like that is Yeah. yeah. Like it's that's right. It it bakes in I mean, yeah, it is good to analyze just from the point of view of understanding like structurally how conspiratorial ideation works, because they bake in all of these assumptions. And one of the assumptions is that he's not wrong, right? Like he's he's not wrong about connect, that all these dots were set up and that there was no other possible explanation for what's going on. It's actually that it was all set there as traps and so on. Those premises are baked in and there is no consider, like he says it's a hypothesis, but it's not because a hypothesis doesn't operate like considering that there's no possibility that the other alternative explanation for reality is true. Like just the banal one. Right. No, that's no <laughs> that hypothesis. <laughs> yeah, that's like notably yeah. absent in this particular model. So just to hear Brett sign off from the segment, Matt, just, you know, maybe we've judged him unfairly and we need to think about this a bit more. So um, let us please think outside the box. We are up against an enemy that appears to be back on its heels but it is an enemy with a very deep toolkit going back at least as far as 1963. And it is very important that we not underestimate them. All right, I wish you all well. He's so far gone, isn't he? He's, he's so far gone. Adult, uh, adult mind. I get just a little note on the language there. Like, you know, that, that performative nature yeah. of, you know, hypotheses and if this is true and if yeah. I'm correct and so on. But there's no qualification around the premise that they are up against an unspeakable enemy right that will stop no, at no, nothing no. that's you know what i mean that's been proven no. that's just that's reality Matt. yeah <laughs> it's just reality yeah 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 i know it's bad form to pat ourselves on the back but can i say that we never miss we never miss. <laughs> Can I say that? Can I say that? But it's a hypothesis that we never miss. There's a testable prediction. That if anybody responds negatively to that claim, that would show that we do, in fact, never miss. Because I'm going to predict now that somebody will say we have missed. But that would show that they we have. are wrong because I made that prediction. <laughs> science. In science. Well, that's right. <laughs> science uh, that's right i can't back that up i can't prove that we never miss we will miss because we are fallible like all human beings but we didn't miss with brett no we didn't miss with james Lindsay. we covered those people when they were far less obviously mental than they are than they subsequently became and we oh he had a dead to rights i didn't even mention james Lindsay was talking about like kamala invoking satanic uh like oh that's right he, he had a stupid thing but like you know james Lindsay just is yeah he's not even trying anymore he's just dialing it in yeah. just yeah there's demons and satanic rituals everywhere 